So in the first row, you can declare some work area for tables, which we are going to use for the selection screen. Okay, so let's say here I want to, to use table EKKO and also EKPO. Second, after that, we have to do data declaration. So if you are using multiple internal table, declare all one by one. So here, based on my output requirement, first I am doing a type declaration. So how to do type declaration? So as I explained, I am going to I am going to display all those fields in the output. So what I will do, I will first create a type declaration with all those fields. Okay. So how to do type declaration? It types space like begin of, you can give any name here, tp underscore, let's say list, comma, and then here, first, okay, first end of tp underscore list full stop. And in between begin and end of tp underscore list, we have to add all our field names. So first field, I want a cell. I will explain why I'm using this cell field. And now what I will do, like, to add any comment, either we can add a star at the starting of the line, it is double quote to comment the line. Okay, both will work. So let's add a star here. So for comment, I'm writing as from header table EKKO. So here I will add all the fields which are required to select from EKKO table. So first field I want from EBLN. First field I want EBLN type. So what type we have to do here? Again go to SE12, open the table. And here we have to assign the data element. Using two way we can assign the data element. Either directly data element or second option table name hyphen field name. Okay, both will work fine. So here we have to assign the data element type EBLN. Okay, and second, I told second option is no, second field is BSRT type. So how we can define this field? EKKO hyphen BSART. Okay, so both will work fine. So first I have assigned directly data element. Second, this field I have declared using table hyphen BSART. If you observe here, for the BSART, the data element is ESART. Okay, so if you are assigning directly data element, you have to assign ESRT here. Okay, because initial, I mentioned table name here. So in that case, after hyphen, we have to give the field name. Both will work fine. Okay, so like this, my next field, I am going to use as a e date I type er date from the same header table. Okay, so like this, we have to declare all the fields. So what I will do, remaining field, I will add from my list. Concept I explain. So you can follow the same process to declare all the fields. So here first I have declared my fields from the header table. Then from vendor table that is LF1 table, I want name one field. Okay, and then next, I want all the fields from my line item table, that is EKPO. So like this, we can do the data, data declaration. So after type declaration, we'll define internal table and work area. For the data, gt underscore list, type a standard table of tp underscore list. I am referring here to structure. So you have to write like this, gt underscore list, type a standard table of this structure. The so system will get an internal table of this structure. Second, I want to define a work area. gs underscore list, type tp underscore list. Okay, next what I will do, I will 
डिक्लेयर इंटरनल टेबल रेफरेंस टू डीवीआईसी टेबल जीटी अंडरस्कोर एल एफ ए वन टाइप स्टैंडर्ड टेबल ऑफ एल एफ ए वन सो ही सिस्टम विल रिफर टू द स्टैंडर्ड टेबल स्ट्रक्चर फी गो टू टेबल एल एफ ए वन दिस इज द वेंडर डिटेल्स ओके सप्लायर मास्टर so for this system will refer to the standard internal table or gs underscore lfa1 type lfa1 okay so like this we have defined first type structure and then internal table now next we will create a selection screen for this now let's get the selection screen like selection screen begin of block b1 with frame title text 001 and selection screen end of block b1 and between this begin and end of screen either we can define select options or parameters okay so first We will define select options. So first field I want on my selection screen is EBLN. So it is better to follow some naming convention like S is for select option and P for parameter. So like EBLN. Now this is for EKKO EBLN. Okay, table name hyphen EBLN. Now this table name we have to define here. Which we are going to use in the selection screen. A second field here I am going to use is S underscore A date, that is purchase order date for EKKO A date. And third field I will add here as BSART, that is purchasing document type for EKKO. B S A R T. Those three fields are from the header table. Okay, let's add one more from the line item table. Like I'm using only matnar for E K P O matnar. Okay, after the last declaration, add a full stop. Save. Save. This is check. Control F two. And then. Activate Control F3. So after activate, if you click here on Direct Processing or press F8, so we can see the selection screen is created. Okay, but here we can see the field name. So what we require here, field label. So how to assign the field label here? Here go to Text Elements, click on Selection Text. Now here also we have two options. One is like DDIC reference. If you select the check box, system will assign the text from the table field, table label. Like here, you can see here, like for BSART, for this data element label is purchasing document type. Okay, so same text will appear here, purchasing document type. Okay, and in case if you want to assign your own text, simply uncheck. And you can write here or on text. Let's say metal ID. So this is how if you want to use standard label, select check box or custom and check this. Activate. Go back. Now if I execute, we can see the labels: purchasing document type, created on, doc type, metal ID. Okay. So now our data declaration is done. And we have defined. We have created selection screen. Next, we'll do the data selection. So for that, what we write like start of selection and end of selection. So in between, we'll select our data. We'll create the build data, perform routing, and finally, we'll display data in the output.